I've tried a bunch of different plants in my Wallstad method tanks and some of them definitely perform better than others. With the Wallstad method increasing in popularity, I wanted to publish this video going over five of my favourite plants for natural water purification. Now there are a bunch of different plants out there that can work well in Wallstad tanks, but I consider all of the plants in this video to be heavy hitters that will help maintain safe and stable water parameters for your fish. So first up is Limnophilia sessiliflora and I honestly think that this is the best submerged plant for Wallstad method tanks if you have the time available to trim it once a week. It's the fastest grown stem plant I've ever kept by far and it is relatively easy to keep and get it to thrive in your aquarium. It works well with a topsoil capped with gravel or sand substrate like you'd use in a Wallstad tank and it also works well with low to medium level lighting. The rapid growth rate of the plant helps to use up a lot of ammonium and nitrate from your aquarium water helping to maintain safe and stable water parameters. Ammonia and nitrite are commonly overlooked with Wallstad method tanks and people often forget that beneficial bacteria colonies are usually still required to help process them. Thankfully the leaves of Limnophilia sessiliflora provide an absolute ton of surface area for the required bacteria colonies to form. Being a stem plant you can quickly and easily trim the excess growth from the plant and replant it in your substrate to quickly propagate the Limnophilia sessiliflora. Flora. This means that a single pot of this plant can easily be enough for a small Wallstad method tank helping to keep your costs as low as possible. Unfortunately this plant is a little too good at its job and there's countless reports out there from people saying that their limnophilia has started to turn brown. This used to be a common problem in my tanks until I realised that it was due to the limnophilia sessiliflora using up as much of the nitrate as it possibly could and essentially starving itself. Here's a clip from some brown and limnophilia Nephilia from one of my old tanks and as you can see the difference between this version of it and the healthy version is obvious. In my experience just increasing the amount of food that you feed your fish has been enough to help fix this in about four weeks but you could use a liquid fertilizer if needed to. You can track your nitrate and phosphate levels with test kits if needed to make sure that the plant isn't starving in your Wallstad method tank because this is honestly very very efficient at what it does. As I mentioned this plant does need regular maintenance and it'll usually need trimming once every one to two weeks so it will start to dominate your tank. The maintenance will only take a couple of minutes to complete as you just need to trim the excess growth but I know that people live busy lives and you might want something that's a little more low maintenance. Next up we have Salvinia auriculata and there are a few different versions of Salvinia in the hobby and I'm sure they'll all work well but I only have direct experience with the auriculata version. I currently have Salvinia in every single one of my aquariums and this thing is an absolute beast. It consumes a high amount of nitrate and it single-handedly helped me balance the nitrogen cycle on a couple of my aquariums. By that I mean my test kits would show that nitrate levels are steadily increasing between water changes but after adding salvinia to the tank the nitrate levels rapidly decrease as it uses it for food. My current test kits don't differentiate between ammonia and ammonium making it difficult to track its performance with these two nitrogen compounds but I am confident it will help with the ammonium too. One of the main advantages of floating plants for Wallstad method tanks is their easy access to CO2 from the atmosphere. This helps to encourage rapid growth in the plants and maintain safe and stable water parameters for your fish and inverts and I do have another video going over the best floating plants that goes into this in more detail and I'll link it in the card and description. Being a floating plant you can easily propagate this from one tank to another by moving a couple of leaves over to your new tank. In my experience within a week or two new shoots will start forming on your salvinia and you'll quickly have plenty of the little plantlets in there. One of my favourite things about salvinia is its variable leaf sizes as shown here. These are both salvinia auriculata leaves from two of my different tanks. One of them is a heavily stocked tank with plenty of nitrate and phosphate and the other one is a low nutrient tank. As you can see they are very very different sizes so you can quickly and easily glance at your tank and get a rough idea of the actual nutrient levels in that tank and then adjust the feeding for your fish or add a liquid fertilizer if needed. I do get a couple of questions asking why I keep salvinia in floating plant rings for some of my tanks and it's due to light penetration. Keeping the salvinia in the floating plant ring lets me quickly and easily adjust where it sits on the surface of my aquariums if needed so I can tweak the light penetration to my submerged plants and prevent any issues. One potential downside is how much salvinia I actually 
remove each week from every single one of my tanks and I literally remove fistfuls of this stuff every single week. I'd guess this takes five to 10 minutes per week because I have 10 aquariums, but again, I know people might be looking for low maintenance plants. That said, if I could only use two plants in my Wallstad method tanks, this would definitely be one of them. Next up, we have Rotala rotundifolia, and I currently have this in six out of my 10 aquariums. I really, really love this plant. Now, there's a bunch of different types of Rotala in the hobby, with some of them being considerably more difficult to keep than regular Rotala rotundifolia. In addition to that, I've also seen some people in other countries say that Rotala rotundifolia is commonly sold as Rotala indica as well, but here in the UK the plant labelling is pretty solid between the two different plants. In my experience Rotala rotundifolia doesn't grow as quickly as any of the other stem plants featured in this video but this can actually be an advantage. It definitely grows fast enough to help maintain safe and stable water parameters but not so fast that you need to trim it every single week. I would guess that I probably trim my Rotala rotundifolia once every three to four weeks depending on the specific tank and that's why I usually choose it for my personal personal setups over limnophilia. One easy way to overcome the slightly slow growth rate of this plant is to just add more Rotala rotundifolia to your tank and this is surprisingly easy to do. This specific tank is not a Wallstad method tank but I did recently have a lot of issues with blackbeard algae and staghorn algae so I trimmed the excess Rotala from my other tanks and planted it all in here as you can see. Within about a month the nitrate and phosphate levels were drastically low even though I only trimmed this once a week rather than adding something like limnophilia. I just added more Rotala and it managed to help deal with the excess nutrients and get rid of that algae. You can use this exact method in a Wallstad style tank if you're having nutrient spikes from the ammonia in the soil. Another advantage of Rotala rotundifolia over limnophilia is the lighting requirements of the plants. Now I have grown both of them under low output stock lights with minimal issues but the limnophilia does end up coming in leggy from time to time whereas the Rotala just grows and grows and grows without issue. I link to this video in the card and description but it also goes over how I had thriving Rotala rotundifolia in one of my old shrimp jar setups that was powered by a USB light that was a 2 watt light. One of my good friends has a Wallstad tank that he literally powers off a regular lamp that you can buy in a supermarket. He doesn't even use an aquarium light and his Rotala still grows without issue. Thankfully Rotala rotundifolia is very easy to find in pet stores and aquascapes and stores and it's actually usually one of the cheapest stem plants in the hobby. If I could only choose two plants for all of my Wallstad method tanks this would definitely be the other one. This is a clip of my Wallstad shrimp tank and it does have other plants in here mainly for grazing for my shrimp but the actual water parameters in this tank are maintained by my dream team Salvinia on the surface and Rotala rotundifolia in the back. Next up we have pearlweed and just to be clear I am new to this plant but there's other people on YouTube who have successfully use this in their own Wallstad tanks without issue and I have a friend who uses it too. I know that companies like Tropica often list this plant as an advanced category plant but in all honesty it's been very very easy to keep for me. I have this in my guppy tank with a medium output light that uses topsoil capped with sand like you would in a regular Wallstad tank and the plant is absolutely thriving and growing very fast. I also have pearlweed in this Wallstad shrimp tank under a low output light and it does seem to be doing okay. Here. It is having some issues with browning in this shrimp tank but I honestly think that this is due to a lack of nutrients rather than light because shrimp are a very low bio load species. I'm probably going to start dosing this tank with liquid fertilizer until my Bloody Mary shrimp colony breeds and grows larger so I can feed them more and get more nutrients into the tank safely. Now there's a ton of contradictory information in the hobby about pearlweed so it's an absolute pain to research this plant. From what I can tell this is due to the term pearlweed being used to describe several different plants for the Hemianthus family. I use Hemianthus micromoides sold by Tropica and even though it's marked as advanced it's been very easy to keep. As you can see in my clips it's still grown in for both of my tanks but this does tend to be a shorter plant than the other stem plants featured in the video. I would estimate that its growth rate is slightly faster than Rotala rotundifolia as well but like I said it's a bit of a pain to actually track the nutrient uptake of these plants 
with my setups because I have multiple plants in there. One of my good friends has pearlweed in a few of his different tanks and he reported that for the first two to three months it does have a pretty fast growth rate and then after the third month it just rapidly increases and can quickly take over his tanks. I haven't had pearlweed in my own tanks long enough for this to occur yet but I will report on monthly updates if it does happen so keep in mind this might be a higher maintenance plant and something like Rotola Rotunda Folia may be better for you if you want a lower maintenance plant. Finally we have Hygrophila Polysperma and these are all old clips as I don't currently have this in any of my tanks. This is a great plant for Wallstad Method tanks as it has a very consistent rapid growth rate even under a low output light and just grows and grows and grows similar to Rotala. Unlike Rotala Rotundifolia and Limnophilia sessiliflora that will consistently grow vertically, Hygrophila Polysperma does grow out in random directions. If you are more on the aquascaping side of the hobby, the unpredictable growth can be a pain to deal with as you will need to trim it a lot, but even if you're not an aquascaper, it can cause issues with light blocking and that's the main reason that I had to remove it from my tanks. You'll see two different versions of the plants in these clips. There's the all green version which is regular Hygrophila polysperma and there's the one with the lighter leaves and the pink tint to it which is Hygrophila polysperma rosanavig. Both will work perfectly fine in a Wallstad tank especially something like a Wallstad jungle setup where you want unpredictable plant growth in all directions but the unique pink hue on the Rosanovig variant which is caused by a virus does add something unique to your tank. Anyway guys that brings the video to a close hopefully it was helpful and I honestly do think that Rotala Rotundifolia is your submerged plant with Salvinia is your floating plant or the dream team for Wallstad method tanks but all of the featured plants in this video will work fine.